Uh, I, I've, I've been involved with uh, medicine and, and going to China for um, almost 30 years. And uh, I first went in 1982 to uh, multiple cities to teach corneal transplantation. And I've been back to China many, many, many times. And uh, spent times in the hospitals, in caring for patients, lecturing to doctors, teaching. Um, and most recently working with the Ministry of Health with our preferred practice patterns and, and standards of care. But one of my observations in going to China, especially early on, but even today, is even at the most modern hospitals along the eastern seaboard in the major cities of China, uh, when you walk into the lobby and you see the pharmacy, there is a typical Western pharmacy that has the eye drops that we're familiar with, the antibiotics, the glaucoma medications, and so forth. But then right next to it is the traditional herbal pharmacy. And it's interesting to watch the patients go up to the window, order or, or take their Western medicines, and then go to the herbal window and take their herbal medication. And when you ask the doctors about this, the ophthalmologists, and these are well-trained ophthalmologists, um, they say yes, the patients really believe in this and we support that. And as long as they take their, their Western medication, uh, the medication that we know will treat glaucoma or lower the intraocular pressure, we also know that some of this other medication will work sometimes in a synergistic fashion. It will enhance the effect of the medication. So my experiences in China have been fascinating. We've seen a lot of acupuncture, acupuncture in treating various eye conditions, acupuncture even for anesthesia in eye procedures. And I personally have observed this, and uh, I've been impressed at how effective it is. You know, years ago, um, when we went to China, it was all a one-way street. We would bring all the information, and they were like sponges and they would take it. And now when I go to China, I do pick up some bits and pieces of information. Uh, sometimes it's surgical technique. Uh, sometimes it's um, management of uh, a specific uh, condition. Um, it's hard for me to, to, to give a specific example right now, but I think this is something that I am going to focus on more because we are learning and we do exchange information. And this is something that I think will uh, help us in better caring for our patients as well as us going there and trying to help them. Uh, one thing we have learned, interesting enough, in the preferred practice pattern uh, uh, project was they did some very nice studies looking at barriers to why the clinical guidelines or preferred practice patterns weren't fully incorporated into practice. And I think some of the lessons that I saw and learned there I've now incorporated into my lectures and we will be bringing this back to the United States and seeing if indeed we have similar issues, and actually I, I think we do. Uh, regarding the preferred practice patterns, uh, the Chinese Ophthalmologic Society adapted our guidelines. They translated them into Chinese and modified them slightly where there were some minor cultural differences where they had to make some changes. Um, and then we took them to the Ministry of Health, and the Ministry of Health then uh, thought that these were what they needed and uh, we had a formal signing ceremony between the American Academy of Ophthalmology, the Ministry of Health of China, uh, the Chinese Medical Association. Uh, this was done in Tiananmen Square in one of the government ministry buildings. It was covered on national television and we were the first medical society to have their clinical guidelines in any specialty adopted and adapted by the Chinese government. Uh, now, uh, the next phase of the project is that the government now is looking at 
uh, taking these guidelines and moving more into patient safety issues and what can be learned from the clinical guidelines and how to make surgical procedures and procedures within the hospital and the clinics uh, safer. And again, we're learning from them and I think this is something that uh, we'll probably bring back here and see where it's applicable to our, uh, our patients. If you have the opportunity to travel to China, to work in China, the people are terrific, the patients are wonderful, the doctors are, are first class, uh, they come to our meeting here, our annual meeting, they uh, enjoy the interaction, and I think if you have the opportunity to, to travel to China and do some ophthalmo ophthalmological work while you're there, uh, I would definitely do it. It's, it's a great experience.